Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH. Today what we're gonna talk about is VMware changing their per socket licensing policy to a per socket and per core model. Now, a lot of folks have gone out, especially in the consumer media, and said that this is a totally anti-AMD move and they've totally flipped out about it. Now, on the other hand, if you kind of look back in STH history to April, 2019, we actually called this the you know, 2019 per socket license again and license again because we knew that in 2019, basically we were at the end of the road for that. And so in this article, we're gonna talk a little bit about a couple things. First, we're gonna talk about why VMware is making the change. We're gonna talk about what they're doing with the change. We're gonna talk about how that impacts Intel, AMD, and some of the other players in the market. And finally, we're gonna talk a little bit about what you can do to take advantage of the new licensing scheme. And I really apologize, I sound a little bit nasally today. I'm sick, so it's the best I can do. Sorry about that. Okay, the VMware release on this is very straightforward. Instead of having a simple per socket licensing model, we now have a per socket, but up to 32 cores per socket licensing model. In today's model, one is paying you know, per socket. So that means whether you have four cores or you have 64 cores in that socket, you're paying a per socket licensing cost. With the new model, you still look at the per socket side, but you're also looking at how many cores are in that socket. So if you have you know, one or two to 32 cores, that's still one, one socket license. But if on the other hand, you start moving up the stack, and now let's say you have a 64 core AMD Epic 7742 processor, well now, you're gonna need two 32 core per socket licenses. And that, Kinda is a little straightforward, but it's also a little bit confusing. VMware actually published a pretty good little diagram that kind of shows you what that looks like. Now, some folks have said this is per core licensing. We wanna get very clear here. This is not per core licensing. This is 32 cores per socket increment licensing. That may not seem like an important nuance to everybody, but in multi-socket servers, it actually is very important that VMware structured their new license model like this. And just to kind of illustrate conceptually why this is important, if VMware were selling 32 core pack licenses, you could take say two 16 core CPUs and say that's 32 and be okay. You could also kind of in another extreme take a force way eight core per socket server and still only have 32 cores and only need one license. But instead, VMware is very focused on keeping that tie to the per socket model. And because VMware is really focused on that per socket metric, it's really incentivizing customers to look at the higher core count SKUs in both the Intel Xeon Scalable and kind of the mid-range SKUs, I would say, in the AMD Epic 7002 series, which are the 32 core SKUs. So if you look at it from a current Intel Xeon Scalable perspective, you know, it really makes sense in a lot of cases and people are gonna wanna buy the Platinum 8280 with 28 cores and 205 watt TDP versus something lower in the stack, like a 24 core Intel Xeon Platinum 8268. And we review both those chips and we'll link those reviews in the description. Now for today's CPUs and today's Intel Xeon CPUs specifically, that 32 core limit doesn't really seem like it's a big deal, but Intel has committed to shipping its Ice Lake Xeon generation in 2020 those CPUs are gonna go over that 32 core limit. Of course, it's a future product, so you know that could change, but that's basically what is expected at this point. And when they do go over 32 cores, even the Intel Xeon buyers are gonna to have to contend with, you know, where do you buy in the stack? Now for AMD servers, this presents a completely different challenge. You're gonna look at something like a AMD Epic 7502P, or maybe a future Epic part that AMD might wanna release with say, I don't know, 32 cores and 256 megabytes of level three cache. Who knows, they're probably gonna do it because it'd be an optimized part for this segment, but it's not out yet. So still, you know, those are the kind of parts that people are gonna to wanna to look at. Parts that are disadvantaged are those like the 7642 with 48 cores because you're not kinda of at that 64 core limit, you're not, kind of back down at the 32 core limit, you're somewhere in between, and because it's per socket and 32 cores per socket licensing, you can't aggregate two of those and then use a 32 core license to say, oh, we need three 32 core licenses for two 48 core CPUs. And 64 core parts, like the 
AMD EPIC 7702P, they're still totally valid. You just need to get a second license for them. And we're gonna talk a little bit about what that means later on. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about why VMware is making this change. And VMware says that it's doing this to align with other industry players, make it easier for customers to do comparisons. And frankly, if that's the case, it would have been way easier if VMware just dropped the whole per socket business once and for all, and just went to pure per core licensing, even if it was in packs. Perhaps the most cringeworthy line in the entire release says, let me read this one. We cannot continue pricing on a per CPU basis where CPUs could have unlimited core counts. Okay, now anybody at VMware or Dell Technologies on the hardware side, they have access to roadmaps and they could totally tell you that there is a practical limit to how many cores you can fit into silicon, at least today or for the foreseeable future. I mean, that's a very known quantity. Maybe somebody was looking at the giant wafer scale engine chip that we recently did a piece on, and we're gonna link that one in the description as well. It's super cool, we should check it out for the AI applications, but it's not really general purpose virtualization ready at all. I mean, it's a purpose-built accelerator. Instead, what we're gonna offer is, here's a chart that we used last year in the license again piece, really kind of showing what the Intel Xeon trend was in terms of core count per generation for like, you know, 2009 until 2019. What you're gonna see is that there's a pretty reasonable trend line. And realistically, VMware was totally content with this trend line. You know, you got some more cores over the years, but that was offset by the fact that people needed to run more virtualized workloads. So overall, it kind of worked and you could still grow the business with that. Okay, now when we instead look at what happens when we add the latest AMD Epic CPUs to that trend line, you see that the AMD Epic, especially the Rome, the 7002 series, those CPUs got way above that value per socket trend line, right? So VMware as a business, they had to react. And specifically they had to react because you know people are now looking at more than a two to one socket consolidation ratio, which we just kind of showed in our Intel Xeon Gold 52 review. And we actually took a four socket system and kind of showed some of the virtualization testing using KVM, not VMware, okay. Um, but we kind of showed why you actually get those performance deltas and why you can do more than two to one consolidation. And so when that happens, VMware says, okay, hey, we're running a business here. We have to go figure out a new model. And at the end of the day, you can just kind of imagine, right? Like Pat Gelsinger and Michael Dell, they're going for like a one-on-one -on -one business review. And all of a sudden they say, hey, you know, we've known each other for a long time. Instead of doing this in the office, let's go fishing. So they get on their little dinghy. They got a little, you know, electric motor. They're out there. They find a nice spot where there's lots of fish. So they sit there and get ready to put their hooks in the water. Pat looks over at Michael and says, hey, I need some bait. Michael goes, reaches into his can of worms and then says, you know, Pat, these worms ain't free. At the end of the day, VMware, as part of the Dell Technologies umbrella, needs to maintain revenue, needs to maintain revenue growth and margin. So anything like a massive jump beyond a historical trend line, they're going to look at. Now, when we talk about who's the most impacted, we want to get to this whole idea and whole notion of this like Intel conspiracy theory against AMD. AMD still has 32 core parts, which is the maximum that VMware set in terms of their per socket license, right? And so Intel doesn't really have 32 core parts right now. So that's actually pretty good for AMD. And it's not like AMD's per core performance is like way below Intel anymore. I mean, they are very comparable, especially at the higher end of the market. And AMD actually does really well in some areas. And AMD can also create things like a 32 core, 256 megs of level three cache part using eight CCDs each with only four cores and full cache. So, you know, AMD has a lot of options on how to optimize for the specific VMware licensing model. And one other quick point on that, you know, if you can really actually go and say like, oh, if I put 64 core CPUs in there, I can consolidate away you know, another set of servers. So I can go from two 32 core dual socket servers to a single 64 core dual socket server. I mean, go for it, right? I mean, why would you not do that? Because if you think about it, you're saving on the things like the chassis, you're saving on the motherboard, you don't have support, you don't have an IDRAC license. I mean, there are an absolute ton of things that you could get rid of if you actually do go in and kind of upgrade. And if you think about it, that's the part that Dell EMC really cares about. I mean, they want to sell more powered servers. They want to sell more IDRAC licenses. 
They want to have more support contracts. I mean, they want more servers. So this is not necessarily a bad thing for the Dell Technologies umbrella of companies. Now, really, where I think there's a much bigger impact is not on the AMD side. Instead, I'm going to direct your attention to the Cavium, now Marvell, Thunder X2 review that we did. Now, that is a 32-core processor with four-way SMT, which means that it has a total of 128 threads per processor. You could do two processors in a dual socket configuration and have something that, you know, performed pretty well. Now, ARM is really still working on trying to get their per core performance up to the same level as Intel and AMD. They're making strides, not quite there yet in all areas. So, you know, that's where they are, right? But in 2018 at VMworld, VMware actually showed off ESXi on ARM and they showed it again in 2019. And they're saying, hey, we need to go do this. And they know they need to go do this because at the edge, when you start getting to some of the devices that sit at the edge, if VMware wants to be a player and not seed everything to cloud virtualization like KVM, then you know VMware needs to be on ARM at the edge, full stop. And what we've seen lately is you have ARM Neoverse offerings. You see like the AWS Graviton 2 with 64 vCPUs. You also see things like the Huawei chips with 64 C CPU cores. So these ARM chips have lower performance per core, but they're 64 core devices. So a 32 core per socket licensing model, that's not what you want. We're also gonna see companies like Marvell and Ampere and others come out with more than 32 core offerings over the next year or two. So, you know, the ARM ecosystem is moving full steam ahead at over 32 cores per socket. So if you're a company out there and you're thinking like, okay, well, how do I use those new high core count ARM chips with VMware? Something that's automatically going to hit your TCO calculation today is you're going to say, well, okay, if I have to go pay my VMware licensing cost, but only get 32 cores out of that, I mean, and those cores aren't as fast as the Intel or realistically the AMD cores, well then, I mean, that's a problem, right? Because if you think about it, that changes my TCO calculation because I'm getting less value for each of my VMware licenses. Now, this is totally not going to impact, you know, the IoT, ARM, and ESXi initiative. That's going to happen, and that's going to be on a totally different model. But for anybody that's kind of looking at this and trying to do a sizing of the new ARM servers versus what we have on the x86 side, VMware needs to come up with a different licensing model for those innovators in the field. And if VMware is going to do that, is going to have a different model when they look at the high core count ARM chips versus the x86 chips, then what's the whole point of having this per socket thing anyway? Let's just go and have a per core, tie it to an architecture and put a price tag on each core and let's call it that. It sounds a little bit more complex, but the people that are buying this stuff, they're not bozos, they, they can figure this out. Okay, and before we move on, what you're gonna notice is that we snuck the SMT discussion in here a couple times, right? Specifically, you know, when we talked about the Thunder X2 and its four-way SMT, you know, that's another little trick that chip designers in the future could do if everybody just goes to a blanket per core model because they can now say, okay, we get a, you know, maybe a double digit performance gain each generation just by adding SMT. So they can go set a two-way SMT like Intel and AMD have today. They could potentially go to four-way SMT. And if they did that, well, then we'd have to come up with a different per core licensing model or metric anyway, because, well, those would be way faster per core than we have today in a lot of workloads. Okay. But the bigger question is like, what do you do today? Right? And so let's talk about that for a sec. So if you're buying servers today, and especially if you're looking at the 64 core parts, VMware actually announced that they are going to kind of grandfather in the 64 core purchases or 48 core, where, wherever you're at, before April 30th, 2020. What that means is if you buy the server and you buy the licenses before that date, you're going to get an extra, say, 32 core license. So you'll have two for the price of one, and that kind of protects your investment and basically grandfathers you into the old way of licensing. So a really good way to think about that now is, well, hey, if you're going to buy 64 core machines in maybe May, June, July, somewhere in that time frame, maybe pulling those purchases in to April, that could make a lot of sense. You have to do the time value money calculation and your TCO analysis, but you know, that's something to definitely look at. Now, if you're an Intel buyer, you know, for the time being, there's really no change. I mean, the Intel Xeon Platinum 9200 series you could use it for VMware, but you're also going to be totally hamstrung because you only have a single DIMM per channel, which is not really optimal. You also can't use Intel Optane DCPMM. 
So there's some technology reasons that you don't really want the Platinum 9200 in its current form. As a little STH tip, you might not want to purchase servers right now. Maybe wait until, I don't know, March or something like that if you're buying Cascade because, you know, that gives Intel a little bit of time to respond to these changes. Okay, and if you're looking further at your purchases in like the next quarter or so, and kind of looking the second half and late second half of this next year, we're going to start seeing the Intel Xeon Ice Lake generation come out. Now, Intel's committed to making that a 2020 product, so we'll see. But there's a good chance you're going to see a 32 core virtualization optimized SKU because the VMware market is big enough that it can support something like that. That's a future product, so we're going to put that in the speculation basket, but mm, good chance. At STH, we want to see VMware on ARM deployments. So if you're thinking about one of those deployments and you're specking that out, you should get on the phone with one of your VMware reps immediately, and you should go hash out what that licensing model will look like. We think that a lot of those deployments need to be incentivized in the short term. And if you think about cloud optimizations, like, you know, from Graviton 2 or something like that, you know, VMware has to go figure this out. And the answer can't be 32 core per socket, same price as x86 for the time being. Just not possible. Overall, this is something that had to happen. We called 2009 to 2019 the golden age of per socket licensing, but at this point, it needs to change. The license again has happened because we're starting to see a lot of innovation in the CPU space that we didn't see when there was less competition. At the end of the day, VMware and Dell Technologies are running a business and they need to make money and they need to protect themselves against threats, even if that threat is only to you know, a single digit percentage of their overall revenue. These are more mature businesses. They're not growing at, you know, 200, 300% a year. So, you know, we, VMware has to respond to its new customers looking at 64 core epics. It just has to happen. We went over some strategies in the short term that you can use in 2020 to mitigate the impact. And when we get further into the year, what we're going to see is new processors being released that can really optimize around this new licensing model. At the end of the day, VMware is still a very large ecosystem the CPU vendors are going to respond and we are going to have parts that are optimized for this new licensing model, which will really mitigate a lot of the impact going forward. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I hope you found this video to be useful. I again apologize that I'm a little snuffy. What can you do? I'm sick. But you know what you should do? You should definitely take this opportunity to subscribe to our YouTube channel, check out the STH main site and see some of the other videos that we have on YouTube. Our team is putting out great content every single day. Thanks again for watching and have an awesome day.